Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to walk through AWS Secrets Manager. We're going to use Secrets Manager to store the Postgres credentials for the database we created in the previous video. This is going to replace the .env file we're using locally and also the secrets on the GitHub workflow. A big reason we're doing this is not only to take them out of the GitHub secrets and the .env file, it's also to scale. We have multiple applications that need access to the credentials to access the database. They all have to use those same credentials. Instead of having to copy and paste those credentials in every single repository, store your credentials in one place and permission access as needed. This means that if you want to say rotate the password to the database on a recurring basis to increase security, you don't have to copy and paste that new password into multiple applications. You can change it in one location to make your life a lot easier. This follows the principle of dry, do not repeat yourself, which is a common concept in coding. Now, if you're interested in pricing, you see it down here, 40 cents per secret for the, per month and then five cents per 10,000 API calls. Real quick, before we get started, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Supporting me on either Patreon or GitHub sponsors, subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, etc. Starting the repo on GitHub and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot and I really appreciate it. So let's get started. We're on the management console and we're in AWS Secrets Manager. I'm gonna click store new secret. I'm gonna do other. Then we're gonna copy and paste the values. So we're gonna the code editor go to the .env file, I'm just gonna copy these values right here. The DB might be one variable you don't wanna store in the Secrets Manager because different applications are, might be accessing different databases or different parts of your code in an application might be accessing different bit databases for different reasons. But I'm gonna include it here because the application is so simple, but that's just one thing to consider. So we have all the values, we can click next, give it a name. I'm gonna pull my name from app.py. So I'm gonna copy it from right here because this is what I'm passing in as a name of the secret to pull when I call get secret. Paste that in. And do next. Next. And then we scroll to the bottom. Go to Python 3. What AWS provides you here is boilerplate code on how to access the secret. You don't have to worry about it because I've already copied this code and also modified it a little bit to be a little more parameterized and a little less error prone. And I've already put it into the repo in the secretsmanager.py. I'm not going to walk through how this code works because it's not very important. AWS provides it boilerplate so you can just trust that it works. You only need to really walk through it if you start having errors. Click store. Refresh. There's our secret. Scroll down, retrieve secret value. We can see all the values here. Great. One other thing we need to do though is we need permission the IAM user we created previously in the video series to be able to access AWS Secrets Manager because by default, no user can. So you need to go to the IAM console, go to users, select your user, we're going to click add permissions, we're going to type in secrets, next review, add permissions. Great. And we see it right here. So I'm going to go back to the code, go to the .env. We no longer need these values right here. We're going to keep them here just for record. We no longer need them. Go to app.py, you commented out os and load .env because these variables are no longer needed because we're not using the .env file anymore. We're instead using Secrets Manager, import get secret. You go to Secrets Manager. This is the boilerplate code that I just showed you on AWS for when we created the secret. So that I added the parameters, secret name, and region name. So we pass these values in. And I've also modified a little bit at the bottom to be a little less error prone. Again, not gonna walk through this. At dot pi, we're calling get secret, passing the name, which is exactly the same as what we have on AWS right here, and my region is US East 1. If your region is different, you should change this here. Database URI, exactly what we had before, except now, instead of calling os.gettingnv, we're calling dbconfig postgres user. Because dbconfig, when we call get secret, returns a dictionary. So we're just calling these values right here. Postgres user lines up with, right here, postgres user. Great. So we go to secrets manager, we already looked at that. We can go to the GitHub workflow file. What's happening here? We're now back to doing it like this. We're pushing the Docker image to ECR. We no longer use the Postgres credentials. We're not passing them in as build args anymore because we don't need to, because now we're pulling them from AWS Secrets Manager. So if we commented out what we did in the previous video, we were passing them in as build args because we no longer need to. Life is a little bit simpler. Great, so if we're actually pushing it to AWS, let's just run it locally real quick. Let's make it really similar just to do Python app.py just to see it in action. Okay, it's running, so we can go to the web browser, Go to localhost, 5,000. I see it's running fine. Great. Let's 
go back. We can kill it. Control C. Clear. So now it's actually push the data to us. Go to the browser. Go to GitHub. Go to Actions. Deploy. Run workflow. Run workflow. Refresh. Deploy. Deploy. And I'm going to fast forward to when this is done. Okay, so the deployment to AWS completed successfully on GitHub. So now we can actually check our Route 53 URL to see if we can access the application. Go to our browser, AWS ECS demo dot programming with Alex dot com. Great. More importantly, let's check the list DB method. Great. So we can access the RDS database from our application using Secrets Manager instead of environment variables we pass in in the Docker file when we're building the application. This is great. This makes our lives a lot easier. If we want to change any of those values, the Postgres database, username, password, instead of having to redeploy our app to redeploy the environment variables, we can simply change them in AWS Secrets Manager so whenever the application needs to access those values, they can just call it from Secrets Manager instead of having to rely on environment variables that are stored within the application makes our life a lot easier and allows us to update our application much easier as well by decoupling these components. In the next video, we're going to walk through how to set up monitoring for our application on AWS. So we're going to set up email alerts if our application has any downtime so we can spawn in immediate time instead of having to rely on our end user to tell us that our application isn't functioning correctly. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.